All right, so we left off in this section in the previous video. Uh, towards, this vi towards the end of the previous video, I, if you guys did watch, I would have talked about why grid layout is not going to be always feasible. The primary reason being the grid layout that we used in the first section of the series was to actually give you guys a simple example of how easy it is to place elements inside a Kiwi application. But now we're going to pivot from there and talk more about other layouts, primarily the float layout. So the float layout is actually very, very easier and also simple to implement the uh, by actually not worrying about grids so if you take a simple example of a grid everything is going to be a block section or a block of a block of a space in the application so it's going to be really really difficult to place elements by just assuming that it's going to be inside a simple block so if there's going to be a block where i need to have one element in one block and the other element another block it's not actually possible so that's what is going to be a disadvantage or maybe a cons with respect to the uh, grid layout so we're going to pivot from there and learn about the float layout in this video additionally we're also going to be trying to achieve our final picture and also i'm going to be talking about how to add some elements and actually make this thing much more usable so all of this is going to be done in this video make sure you stick to watch through the end of this video all right so to first begin with i'll just go ahead and start directly implementing my first layout which is nothing but the uh, float layout so both float layout it's just the same as how you did for your grid layout, same format again, UIX and instead of grid, you take float and that's it. So now what we're going to do is then replace our bottom layout section here and we're going to replace it with the float layout. So it's going to be like this. That's the first step. Okay. Now that's going to be actually also giving us, uh, giving us a lot of different elements and a lot of different properties as well. So we go into grid uh, float layout, read the documentation for some time. You'll understand that float layouts, everything is with respect to a simple position. So position and size is going to be of very, very high importance. So as you can see, there's a pause, the position in size, hint and size. So what do exactly do, do those things mean? So let's assume that I have a size of a size. I mean, I have a, a simple rectangle of size seven cross 500 so what i'm trying to do is that i can place the elements of my choice for example if i want a button to be placed inside this float layout i can directly uh, give the position and the size of the uh, of the uh, image or the, of the button or of the widget that i'm trying to place inside the float layout but directly specifying the values now with all these values are directly going to be present inside the float layout if i'm going to have a say of size of uh, 700 cross 500 for the float layout and i want a button to be placed exactly in the x y coordinate of 100 comma 150 i can directly give that value inside my uh, button and it's automatically going to be placed in that specific position now that's going to be the uh, use of the uh, positions and size now what is the use of the position hint and size hint now what i can also do is to give a relative value of maybe say for example 20 percent of the size of x is where my uh, uh, my button is going to be present and in the 60 percent from the bottom i want my button to also be present so like it's going to be an xy position but relative to the float layout so that's the use of a position hint and size hint and if you are actually trying to use a position hint and size hint that's actually much more advisable to use primarily because if you are changing the size of the application the Kiwi engine will automatically make sure that the, uh, the the buttons and the whatever widgets you're trying to place inside float layout is automatically going to be adjusted. So we we'll directly go ahead and start actually writing the code for that. Remove all these things that is not going to be any more columns for our uh, bottom layout because it's completely now float layout. So first things first, you need to give it a size. So size is very, very important. We need to define the size of the entire, we need to define the size of our entire application, I mean float layout, which is possible. I'm going to give it a size of uh, maybe 600 comma 600 so this is going to be my size i want it to be 600 cross 600 in size and i also want it to remove all these unnecessary widgets so like i have created some other ways to uh, go work i mean work around the bottom uh, your grid layout uh, Okay, I've re removed all the unnecessary labels and all of that sort. And what we are now going to do is also remove the size hint and size hint from here. Instead, I'm going to be placing the uh, first button with a position hint first with the size hint. So size hint is going to be what is the size of the button, right? Size, I don't know why my shift is not working size hint is equal to it's going to be a tuple value so i need to give it in terms of a relative number only between 0 and 1 so i'm going to say it to be having a size of 0.3 which is 30 percent of the size of the x and y which is nothing but if you had take it in sense it's going to be 200 comma 200 that's going to be 200 comma 200 is going to be size of the button awesome now i'm going to do the same thing for my other button as well just copy and i'll paste it here 
and we are done with this all right so i've placed the buttons i've placed the size as well but now trying to position the buttons the positioning is very simple but you need to understand that the format for position hint is in the form of a dictionary which takes the x value and uh, it's also going to take the y value and both of them are again going to be a float values between 0 and 1 only so i'm going to be giving it a position of say 0.4 from the x left side 0.4 40 percent of the direction direction and the y is going to be 50 percent meaning the center of my float layer all right so this is going to be my first position hint and uh, what i'm going to do is for my next button i want it to be a little bit away from the first button so it's going to be uh, I'm going to be pasting it as 0.5 and 0.5. So it's going to be just one, I mean, one 10% outside my button. So it's going to have a little bit of a good uh, mark of difference between the two buttons. So let's run this application. Uh, you'll understand what I'm telling you guys. Just as soon as you run this application, okay, first mistake, I've actually given it too close. As you can see, if you, I don't know if you can see that, there is actually some kind of an overlay here. That is because our size is too big for it to actually fit into it. And that's also another uh, thing with float layout. It doesn't matter if there's an element already present. It's automatically going to render something on top of it without even considering if there's anything else. So I'll just change the size for, for now because I feel the size is too big. Uh, so now you can see that the size is actually now 20% of the entire float layout box. And it's also extremely positively placed and it's also giving it a much better view much better look to the entire thing now awesome that one step is done now but what we're going to do is you click this button nothing is really happening so we need to add some life into our application so i'm also going to be talking about the buttons bind method that's going to be topic for this video again but i'm not going to be taking you guys through the entire a to z of it just through what bind method is going to do and we'll continue with actual logic for this entire application in the next video so for now what the bind method is going to do is that it's going to be a very simple method that you can attach to a button and as soon as the button whenever the button is clicked that that method is going to be called it's the same everywhere in almost every language that i've seen so just going to first things first create a simple variable for our button and i'll just say it's going to be answer two or something like that and i'll just i'll just put it answer two and yes awesome so we have created an object for our answer two and our, what i'm going to do is first of all add it here and and even same same stuff for our bus first button as well i don't know why i'm typing it so wrong in this video i'll take it from here to here and we'll just add it again here so technically what we've done is just created a variable and we are adding it that back to the widget but what's the use of that first thing is going to be we're going to call the bind method on this so the bind method is very simple it's also going to take a simple on press as the attribute and the on press as the attribute is going to be taking a method callable or the method object which is actually going to be what is going to be fired whenever the button is clicked so i'm going to create a simple method here called this find answer or answer correct button or answer correct callback uh, and also if you go into the button and you can see the bind for this you can see that there's a very simple example on how to call this method it is bind on press callback fired the callback is nothing but a method and it also takes a variable called as instance so the instance is going to be holding all the required details about the button whatsoever is going to be called and you're going to play with it for a very long time and it's also very useful so what i'm going to do is call this method and i'm going to call the answer correct callback remember definitely not without the quotes if you give it with the quotes it's, it becomes a function execution if you want to give it without the quotes it means it's actually just pointing to that method which is yet to be called so what you can do is answer correct callback and you also need to pass an instance as a variable just print if you for example if you want to know what's happening you can just print this button was called so we can just do instance dot text so instance dot text is nothing but pointing to whatever text attribute that is present inside will be printed here so we'll just try this application out and we'll see for ourselves what is happening so button one that's answer button one if you click this awesome it's printing that the button was called answer one and if you click this okay i think i still haven't added the uh, callback for that okay answer one i've added so that's mistake okay let's add the same for our uh, callback to answer two as well 
so if you add uh, is dot bind and we'll do on press is equal to self dot answer answer correct callback awesome just close it and run it and we'll see what happens just now press it it says answer one press it answer two awesome so that's the entire uh, uh, flow for the application now what is remaining for us we have still to look at uh, the applications here the buttons are here awesome present we'll add this towards the end of the wrong needed or not we need to now add the code for the center algorithm of the application so that's what we're going to be doing in the next video make sure you stay tuned for that i'm going to be showing you guys a lot of cool stuff as well in the next video and from that we'll pivot on to how to make sure that the application looks much more uh, good looks looks much more good and also the final video will also be about how do you run the application on apk or which is nothing but an android emulator so that's going to be the course of this uh, video series let me meet you in the next video when something really cool and until then have a super awesome day